So welcome back folks. It is day three of the seven day how to lose a client in seven days challenge. And today is one of my favorite topics. Uh, I'm gonna be teaching you all about the pain in the ass factor. This is how we as business owners um, need to be looking at our client bases. If we're not happy within our business, typically there is a reason why. Um, it's not always the client's fault. I'll just um, put that caveat in there. There could be lots of different reasons why. But looking at our clients can sometimes be a great way to um, start to demonstrate to us which clients are a pain in the ass and which ones are great clients. And there's two metrics which, we, um, which I use in this diagram. So uh, the first one is a pain in the ass factor score, which is on a scale of one to 10. And that's then versus the amount of money which those clients are bringing in. So uh, not very much money and loads of money. So how this basically works is, um, imagine if I was to um, take a client and they are uh, a, a real pain in the ass and they're not paying me much money, I would put them down here and I would put whatever their, their name is, so client A. If they're um, a bit of a pain in the ass, but paying us loads of money, I might put them up here in this client, um, this quadrant, so that's client B. And maybe they're paying us loads of money and they're not a pain in the ass at all, so they kind of go way up here, so that's client C. Now what I tend to find is that um, most people have a lot of clients, a cluster of clients kind of sat around here. We have a few clients who are sat up here. We have probably about 50% of our clients are actually in this sort of space. And then we also have a couple who are dotted around here as well who are kind of helping out. So these clients here are what we call our love clients. They're the clients that we um, work with because we basically want to work with. Maybe they've, they're very loyal and they started off with us very early and we've just grandfathered their prices in, but they're really easy to work with and so we keep on working with them. Um, over uh, here, we've got our um, high maintenance clients. My circle's not big enough. So our high maintenance clients, um, bring us in lots of money, but they're also a pain in the ass, basically, but we don't mind working with them. These clients down at the bottom here are our pitted clients, our pain in the ass clients, basically. No money, pain in the ass. Why do we want to work with them? I'll come on to that in a second. And what can we do with them? Uh, the first thing we can do is just exit them. So we just remove them from our business with a polite um, telephone conversation or email. Up here, these are our golden eggs. So these clients, not a pain in the ass, they pay us loads of money because they value what we do and they're really great fun to work with, so it's all fine. Now, I said that one option is that you exit your pain in the ass factor client. So we just push, get them out of our business, we give them to somebody else, we just say, look, no, I'm really sorry, I can't work with you. One of the things we can't do is move them straight up into here, into these golden eggs. Um, that just doesn't work. It's a two-step process. If you've got pain in the ass factor clients, you need them in your business because finances are maybe a bit short and those extra pennies all count. What you've got to look to do is to move them into this sort of space. So they're either paying you a bit more money, they might still be a pain in the ass, but you're, they're paying you more money, or we move them down into this space here where we educate them that they are being a pain in the ass and they need to become less of a pain in the ass, but we're happy to keep them at the rate they're currently at. So we just manage expectations basically. The second step on either of these is to then try and move them into a golden egg. So once we've got the client, they're still high maintenance, but paying us lots of money. We then manage their expectations into a golden egg. And if they're a love client, we just say, okay, well, is there anything else that we can do for them? So we try and find extra products or services that we can then move them up um, into this golden egg scenario, but we can never move them straight from being a pain in the ass factor client straight into a golden egg. It just doesn't work. But in this scenario, um, uh, well, just one example. So we had, um, when we first started out uh, doing support and hosting, typically there was one um, uh, customer or client um, with one uh, like machine, one PC or one laptop or something like that. As there was more technology and the clients we were working with as they grew, we'd end up with like um, four people in the business and like four different devices to support. From an email perspective, email management perspective, that was an absolute nightmare. And literally all we, did, all we ended up with was spending about 80% of our time 
doing support for email stuff that we weren't getting paid for. And so we started to um, resent a lot of those clients. And what we did at this point is rather than try and move them into, because some of them were in our other um, product ecosystem, so it was absolutely fine. We're building websites for them, doing branding and things like that. We decided we just didn't want the hassle of doing the email support. So we found a partner. And we said to that partner, we've got 120 clients, um, you know, 500 plus email accounts to support. We're not charging any for them, anything for them. We reckon you probably can, but you take care of all of the hassle of migrating them. And so we basically, this entire quadrant, we just moved out of our business. Best thing we ever did. Immediately, our support calls dropped by 80%. And we had more time to spend on nurturing the clients who were in this space. So there's a very valid reason for why we might want to exit these clients, but we do it strategically for our business and we make sure that we have partnerships in place in order to move those clients off to or literally if somebody's a dick just fucking fire them because like life is too short let's be fair so um, that's capacity based pricing um, I'm going to get you to um, uh, map out your clients in here please don't put any client names down if you're going to share this in the Facebook group but just map out where your clients sit within um, this pain in the ass factor chart um, and uh, then I will see you for day four of the how to lose a client in seven days, seven day challenge.